Hello and welcome to the Ms. Artastic podcast. In this episode, we're going to be diving in on how artists get ideas for making art. So we're going to try and understand this so that way we can also facilitate the creative process in your classrooms. So we're going to explore how artists get ideas for making art and where artists get ideas. So as teachers teaching the process of making art with kids, this is an important topic to understand. So that way the creative process can be taught to young artists. You're listening to the Miss Artastic Podcast. Inspiration for art teachers. Here's your host, Kathleen McGivern. This episode is brought to you by artastickids.com. If you're a parent, guardian, homeschool family, or a classroom teacher looking for art lessons and resources, begin your journey by finding free art lessons, tips, advice, and more at artastickids.com. So we're going to be again diving in on and exploring how artists get ideas for making art with kids for the purpose that As teachers, uh, we are guiding kids through being creative thinkers and teaching them to be artists themselves. It's important to teach them uh, about how artists get ideas and inspiration for their artworks so that way they can apply this to their own creative process, whether they're when they're making art um, or they're doing sketchbook explorations uh, with or they're just doing some like choice based learning. So Again, we're going to be talking about where artists and how artists get ideas, where they get their ideas from, um, art inspiration, and where artists source subjects and how to get inspired. So we're going to start off with how artists get ideas for making art. So ideas can come to artists in different ways that are each unique to the individual. That being said, there are some techniques that have been most helpful, especially for me in my own art practice that I use to generate ideas and essentially just spark creative juices. So the first thing is to just allow for free draw in a sketchbook. So free drawing in a sketchbook is just going to help generate ideas by drawing in your sketchbook, right? So sometimes it's intimidating to look at a blank page, but if you grab something to make a mark with and you just start doodling, eventually things and ideas start to come to the forefront of your mind and they start to unfold a little bit. I always try and start drawing things that I'm interested in. Uh, Usually I'll write a list of topics or subjects um, that I'm interested in on a page in my sketchbook. Like I usually just reserve one of the earlier pages or as I change topics uh, throughout the sketchbook, I'll again reserve another page, maybe halfway down uh, the sketchbook as I get there. And then I will just use that as my brainstorm right or my list of things or subjects that I would like to create or draw and then I'll just pick from there and I'll just draw that Um, and as I draw the idea will develop and become more clear and the more I do this the more ideas I get and suddenly I have pages of illustrations of things that I didn't even know I had ideas for Um, so just basically just make a mark and see where it takes you for that one Next is to, number two, is to view artworks and contemporary movements. So another way to get ideas for making art is by viewing art that artists have created. Okay, so I would go to both local art museums um, at your biggest or closest city or closest big city, I guess. Uh, that's usually typically where you're gonna find some of the bigger uh, museums and galleries, but also visit some of the smaller galleries art galleries as well, such as public art galleries, commercial art galleries, and even artist-run centers, and just see their latest shows. And then if you want to get like super inspired, I totally recommend this, but like ask them when their next art show opening is. And and by opening, I mean like their opening reception, right? Like the, the day that they're opening and having their opening reception for their the, the next show, right? So, and, and just like attend. I highly recommend if you've never been to an opening reception of an art show, that you go to one. They're some of the most cool and interesting vibes that you're gonna get. Um, and you're gonna get a chance to meet the artist 
who or the artists who created the art that are in the exhibition and they're typically or most often in attendance and you're also going to meet all their artist friends and you're just going to get a little bit of a glimpse into your local art scene it's totally cool subculture um i ho i totally recommend it uh and you'll just it's just I think that you're going to engage in some really cool conversations that you're not going to be able to have anywhere else. So check them out. Um, third is to watch and be inspired by artists online. So viewing our online was one of the coolest things that we can do this century, right? Like I love following artists that I like at, or um, have seen in art galleries or art magazines on Instagram. Um, and then I try to find them. Like if I'm flipping through Juxtapose or High Fructose that I find a cool artist that I love because those are the magazines that I particularly enjoy. Um, then I'm going to try and see if I can find them on Instagram because typically they are they are there. And then I can see what they're working on in their studios or get clues to their process and pick up new trip tips and ideas because they typically will make reels for that. And that's just super cool. Um, I, a lot of artists even have YouTube channels and my friend, you can learn a lot from YouTube. So for instance, I have never used oil paints in my life. I know. And depending on when <laughs> you're listening to this, I may have or may not have ventured down on that journey. But I've at the time of recording this, I have purchased my first set um, to understand the medium and learn how to use it. Now, there's a whole bunch of reasons for why I didn't ever use oil oil paints, um, mostly for the non for the toxic reasons that from the past. Uh, primarily, I'm a ceramic artist, um, and then I use a lot of watercolors and acrylics because I also use them sometimes on my sculptures. Um, that's the reason why I haven't gone in there, but I have feel, I feel like I'm outgrowing it and I really have always wanted to use oil paints. So anyways, I have no idea how to use oil paints and I'm intimidated because it's something new. So I've watched a ton of YouTube, YouTube videos on the process, the mediums, um, how to paint with oils in a safe and non-toxic way. Um, from a variety of different artists, so people who are more traditional to contemporary to masters to new people who are exploring and just compiling all the notes and ideas and just getting a real sense of the medium and how oil paint, for instance, for this example, how oil paint's being used uh, in contemporary studios in 2023 and beyond and how people are navigating um just clean up or uh, creating a safe studio environment with it. So basically all of the above, right? So I dived in on that um, and I've, I have I feel like I have a lot of information beyond now I need to actually dive in on actually using it. <laughs> I don't know why I'm so intimidated. Like, I just, just, you know, when there's things that you're like, oh my gosh, that's my, oh my gosh. But I'm going to do it. I'm going to love it. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm just going to just do some hardcore passion hours is what's going to happen. And I will, I will get there. <laughs> but anyways, you can learn again from masters on, on YouTube, right? You can learn from master artists on YouTube. Like if you've never done jelly print, I'm sure there's a YouTube video for that, right? So if you're looking for ideas, watch videos and follow along. I even have my own artist YouTube channel. Uh, and you can find me as Kathleen McGivern on YouTube for my own art practice and studio. Or you could subscribe to the Ms. Artastic YouTube channel for art tutorials and drawing lessons for kids. Just simply search Ms. Artastic YouTube. I always have a new video coming out each week. So there is literally hundreds of art tutorials and lessons to choose from and including the video versions of my podcasts. Okay, number four is to deep dive into topics that you like. Like I would write down all the things that you like on a page and then when you go to create, reference that page and pick something that you like to draw. I do this every time I start a new series in my own art practice or when I go to develop characters for my own sculptures and paintings. And then I go again and watch every video. I read and collect images. I get all the books and I basically just deep dive into that topic, right? I'm going to see that topic or that subject in all its varieties and all its forms and all its colors and different lighting and different settings and different gestures. So that way I can, for me, I like to develop my own characters. So I want to have, be able to visualize it in different settings. And then I take all those ideas, I throw them into my brain. This is how I work. I'm not saying this is how kids work, <laughs> but I throw them into my brain. I mash it around and it comes out as something different. And that's just my own personal 
way of creating. And I'm sure that's true for a lot of people. All right, so next is to collect reference images. So you can use Creative Commons free websites to collect um, images and use them as reference. Um, remember that you cannot use any picture that you find online. That is illegal. That is often why if you're wondering, oh, Ms. Artastic, in your resources, you do not have pictures of contemporary artists' artwork in there, but they're all online. Why don't you just put them in there? Because that would be highly illegal. I would be I would be uh, putting myself in dire straits, my friend, dire straits. It's illegal. You cannot just go and pick an artist's artwork and stick it into your resource and then start profiting off of it, right? That's illegal. <laughs> and But there are, um, depending on how long ago they live, right? So for instance, historical works beyond the 70 years um, that they've been passed, since they passed, right? Then it's different. But anyways, there's lots of, that's a whole nother conversation. So anyways, again, my point is that you can't use any pictures you find online. It's illegal. But websites like Pexels, P-E-X-E-L-S dot com or Pixabay, um, offer Creative Commons free images. There's lots of them popping up now where you can find community of people that are uploading their images and even video clips that you can use for free. They're saying it's Creative Commons free. If you want, you can donate to the artist. If you don't want to, you can still use it for free. Uh, it's without, you can do what you want. You can, and even if you look at the, what the uh, instructions are on the image or the, the video, it'll state if you can use it for commercial use, if you're allowed to edit it or mash it up and then re put that out into the world. And uh, most often or not, then that's allowed, that's okay. So um, that's one thing you could do to get lots of, on, on honestly, very high quality images and then use those as references. But another way would to be take would be to just take pictures yourself, right? Like you could have students either um, using their own device or sharing devices or taking turns as a group, taking pictures of things um, and then making their own images, right? You could use it with a tablet, phones, whatever. And then you can use those as reference images to draw, right? Or if kids are wanting to do this as an, an art lesson, they can add uh, a photography element, you can talk about composition and zooming in closer and getting close to an object, uh, changing point of view and all that stuff like that. They can each take their own reference image and then you print them off and then they can go and use that as a reference image for an art lesson that you then create, whether it's an art lesson on value and you print them off on black and white or whatever you decide. So that's just, an, that's just one way to do it without it being Creative Commons problematic. So where artists get ideas for making art. So I think a lot of the time artists can get thing, ideas basically from things that they enjoy, right? So things that they personally enjoy. And that's why a lot of the time you're going to hear me in other posts, uh, blog posts or YouTube, uh, podcast episodes. I talk about teaching to student interests for this reason, right? Artists get ideas and want to make things typically that they personally enjoy or they want to explore. And other times they might see an image or take a photograph that inspires them to create that thing. Other artists will set up still lifes and practice by drawing that object or a series of objects or subjects just to practice drawing and observing um, and creating value with their chosen medium. At the end of it, it's most important to create what you enjoy. So keep a page in your sketchbook, or if these are your students, then have them keep a page in their sketchbook that we add to uh, our ideas to that that come to us as we think of them, right? Because sometimes when we sit there and brainstorm, it's we're not in the mood, the ideas don't come. But there's other times you're like in the middle of things, you're like, oh my gosh, that would be such a great idea. Well, you already have somewhere to record that idea and add things that you think of for things that you're interested in. Okay, so next is to find, is finding art inspiration. So finding art inspiration can be a daunting task. And one of the first things I do is, uh, is I, I get up and then go for a walk. Um, ideas, a lot of ideas can come to you as you walk or you have something on hand. Uh, and typically I'll just keep my, my phone with a Google Docs open or a little notepad. There's like little mini sketchbooks that you can get or you can make your own with your class, right? You can fold and make little tiny miniature sketchbooks like for just ideas. Like how cute would that be? It'd be like bookmaking on a microscopic scale. But microscopic, I mean like post-it note size. How cute. Anyways, it'd be like an idea book. 
But anyways, you just get your, you have something to record your ideas on. You go on it for a walk for 15 minutes or so, and then find somewhere to sit and just start brainstorming things that you're interested in, right? Um, or like artists that you like, or things that you find fascinating, um, fascinating, or mediums that you want to explore. And then you can look afterwards on your pixels or on, pixels, sorry, or on Pixabay. Um, or your favorite Creative Commons free website for images to use as reference or get out books on the subjects or mediums. Again, YouTube is an amazing resource. You can find anything educational um, on your topic there. And then finally, you can collect things that you can keep in a box maybe or on a board and use those as reference material that might spark that inspiration, whether it might be a swatch from Home Depot of colors that you like or fabric samples or maybe you dried a flower that inspired you that you found whatever it is keep things that inspire you so again we're going to talk about art where artists source subjects so two of the best places to source subjects is to look online for images such as on pexels or pixabay pixabay um, or take your own photographs to ensure there's no copyright infringement or to find subjects for still lifes so still lifes can either be objects or humans if you're looking for human subjects, you can use friends or family. Um, students can do peer portraits, right? Um, and either take their picture or have them pose for the life drawing studies. Another option is to look for life drawing classes near you, but keep in mind that these models are typically nude, so you can study the human form. But don't worry, it's only ever nerve-wracking the first time. Then after 10 minutes of staring deeply at someone's body, <laughs> you're only looking for hue and value, right? That's and your form. You're looking at line, hue, and value to create the illusion of form on whatever you're drawing, with whatever you're drawing with, right? That's all you're looking for. What hue is that? <laughs> what value is it? What am I going to mix here? <laughs> That's all you're looking for. What line can I, or mark should I draw? It's all that's going to happen after a while. And if you do them for six hours or eight hours, let me tell you, your mind is really going to only be, <laughs> you're hyper-focused at that point. Another way to draw from life is by putting an object in front of you and drawing it. So use lots of mediums. So this is, invalu is an invaluable practice and is, is essential whether you go to draw, paint, or sculpt. So do this over and over with anything and everything. Old masters, still lifes. That's right. That's what you see a lot of artworks of. Still lifes, portraits. Why? It is the best way to get better at making art and learning to observe and see. Like if you're looking for art lesson ideas, pull things out, do, set up some still lifes in your classroom. My friend, just pick, let them pick their own medium if you want to do choice based or uh, rotate a few um like you could even have it set up in your in your classroom and then have desks around it right and then every uh time you if you know maybe every 15 minutes if you're doing 15 minute sketches they have to move two tables down so they have a completely different perspective right so it's all kinds of things you could do um and play with it right if you're looking for an idea that would be something you could do over and over and over and over again Okay, so how to get inspired? I think the best way is to get inspired as an artist is to just block out time in your day and immerse yourself on a topic that you want to investigate and research. So understanding, image looking, video watching, note taking, drawing, practice drawing the subject over and over and over with different styles and gestures and colors and in different settings. Understand it through research and exploring it in a different, a variety of different mediums. Just really immerse yourself in it um, and get to know your subject. So in conclusion, artists can get ideas from a variety of different places, including their own mind, but also include uh, looking at subjects, collecting research materials and reference images, uh, practicing brains, practicing drawing and brainstorming, and keeping track of things that they're interested in, visiting galleries to get inspired. Uh, early in my days as an artist, I thought I should only use one medium. Uh, only right like I was like no that's it I'm only gonna be using ceramics I'm not gonna I'm only gonna be a ceramic purist that's it guys <laughs> and I was so wrong right it's, it wasn't until later on that I started exploring lots of mediums and trying new things that I learned more about myself and I really started growing as an artist and the exploration allowed me to get more ideas as an artist myself so don't be afraid to try new things step outside your comfort zone draw things from life 
and practice drawing every day. There's nothing more better that you could do than just practice drawing every day because it's not going to only help you in drawing. It's going to help you with sculpting and painting. You can't really do any of that if you're not observing and you're getting an eye to observe and practice drawing. So don't be afraid, again, to step outside your comfort zone and try these things. Try doing things that you wouldn't normally do because this is the best way for artists to get new ideas for making art. All right, my friend, that's it for this episode. Remember, you can find fully planned art lessons in the Ms. Artastic TPT store or visit MsArtastic.com for more resources to help you get going as an artist or an art teacher. All right, that's it for this podcast episode, and I'll see you in the next. Have a great day. Well, that's it for this episode. Please make sure that you subscribe to the channel, Ms. Artastic. And if you create anything and share it online on social media, please, please, I would love to see it. So tag me at Ms. Artastic, and I will check it out or join the community and conversation and use the hashtag, hashtag Ms. Artastic. And I will check it out that way as well. And you can see what other people are creating who create with Ms. Artastic YouTube videos. Well, that's it for this episode and I will see you in the next.